Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today we're going to continue with our little character right here. This is uh, part four of this very cool series. If you haven't seen the other parts, what are you doing here? Go back and check them so that you know what we're going to do because otherwise it's going to be really, really difficult to follow. So um, this is where we are at now, which is at the retopology stage. We finished the retopology stage. And before we move on to the UVs and the textures, I do want to make a, a important, important point. Someone mentioned in the comments on the last video that uh, they were taught by their teachers not to use triangles and to use like other sorts of techniques and stuff. In an ideal world, yeah, that's the that would be the best thing because triangles can be tricky to work with. Uh, when I teach my classes, when I'm teaching a new student, I always teach them not to use triangles either because they are like a double-edged sword. So if you don't really know how to use them, they can become really, really difficult to manage. You can get some issues in your topology. But once you get like used to this, you realize the triangles are perfectly fine. You can look online for the topology of different characters, Overwatch, God of War. Like You can see triangles in your stuff because otherwise it will be very difficult or very heavy to get the same result. Now, in my case, uh, when you do this smooth, this is uh, one of those like little hacks. When you smooth the character after you finish the retopology, one thing that happens is that all of the triangles become squares. That's just due to the way the topology works. Yes, you get a denser topology, so you can see here on the on the teeth, but you can see there's all of these quads on the points right there. So um, you, I would suggest not to worry too much about the triangles, but at the same time, be careful where you place them. You never want triangles on parts that are going to be moving a lot. So for instance, here on the eyes, you definitely don't want to have like triangles on the loops of the eyes or on the loops of the mouth. But if it's like a flat area, like right around here or up here, where you're not going to have a lot of deformation of movement, then triangles are perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, same thing for like hard surface stuff. If it's a thing that's never going to deform, it's just like a cube or something, or like a something with bevels and booleans, triangles are fine because you're not going to deform the mesh. So again, they're like a double-edged sword, just be careful about those. Uh, now, uh, it's time that we start like working with this guy right here. And to do that, one of the things that I want to do is I'm actually going to, uh, as you can see right here, we have all of the high polys. Where they're not the high polys. We use this high polys, uh, but they're not the high polys that we want. Let's grab that one right there and delete it. There we go. So as you can see, we have these five pieces. It's the main body, the jaw, the legs, the eyes, and the, um, the tail. The eyes and the tail, I rebuilt them. I actually did them from scratch, just a cube, extrusion, and a couple of bevels. So no need to have a high poly for this one, but we're going to have to do something. I'm going to grab everything here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze transformation and delete history so that we have clean like history and topology here, and we don't have any issues uh, with, uh, with the formations and stuff. Now I'm going to import the, um, the other object or the, the, the first, like the high poly object. Remember we did a decimation at, this, at the start? which had a, a higher uh, poly count, this one, median HP. I'm going to import that one. It should it should match perfectly fine with our character, as you can see right here. I'm a little bit worried about the, the job because at some point, as you're about to see here, first of all, I'm going to say mesh and separate so that we also have each part of the high poly into separate pieces. So as you can see, the jaw is going to be its own piece. Uh, let's grab all of those right here and say uh, the history. There we go. So you can see the jaw. I don't know why. I think it was in ZBrush. I made a mistake and I uh, like mirrored or something, but that's fine. We can very easily fix this. I'm just going to grab the high poly. I'm going to right click shift and we're going to mirror this X negative and hit apply. Because uh, when we did the retopology, we were using the, the like the left side or the right side. So we're pretty much bringing everything to the to the left side. This might take a little while because as you can see, it is a heavy, a heavy topology. If your computer can't do this, another option is to do this in ZBrush. ZBrush is a little bit faster. I'm going to do that if it crashes, by the way. So let's just give it a couple of seconds. I'm going to pause real quick. Very well. So it did work, as you can see right here. And uh, this is our new high poly, which uh, is, works perfectly fine. We have, it seems like, a couple of holes right there. No big deal. We just go mesh and fill hole. And that should fill the holes. Uh, again, it might take a little bit longer because it's a really, really heavy mesh. Uh, but that should fix those little like holes that we have right there. So once we have this, once we have uh, the high poly and low poly topology, we need to prepare the position of the bakes and then we need to prepare the UVs of the bakes. UVs is the process that we normally use to create a map, a 2D map that's going to hold the position of the faces in 3D space 
And then we paint on those faces and we create maps on those faces that's going to tell the object how it should look, the colors that it should have, the amount of light that should reflect, the kind of like translucency or subsurface scattering, like all of those things we can control by um, using these maps. I, UV maps are one of those things. I, I started learning 3D back in 2011, so 11 years ago. Um, or was it 2010? I think it was 2010, like at the at the end of 2010. Anyway, so the point is, ever since I started uh, like my 3D career, we've had UVs, and the, uh, we are gonna have UVs for a long time, I think. Oh. So have that. That's weird. Maybe it's just oh, they're faces. Okay, they're like bad faces. I mean, that's fine. It's just a small little thing, and we can paint over it instead of uh, instead of substance. So it's not that big of a deal. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna leave that so that I can show you how to fix that later um, because it's a. It's a relatively common thing to have every now and then. So UVs, as I was mentioning, are really important. Now, here's what I'm going to do. As you can see right here, we have two meshes. We have the low poly mesh and the high poly mesh. We need to have them in the same place because what's going to happen when we do the bakes is the low poly mesh will shoot rays into the sky or into the space. And when it finds the high poly mesh, it will grab the information that it gets from that high poly place. So one very common mistake that people make is that they do their retopology properly, but then they move things around and the high poly is all the way over there and the low poly is all the way over here. So it doesn't find the information and therefore it doesn't get the pics. A problem that we have right here is since the jaw is like literally on top of the body, we would get bakes from the jaw onto the body. And I want to avoid that. I also want to have access to the uh, open mouth. So what I'm going to do, as you can see here, is I'm going to bring the um, the jaw down so that we're not close to the mouth. And that way we have access to the mouth and we can paint up there without having to worry about the jaw down here. Some people like to have everything in the same place. You can also do that. Uh, but I think this one is a little bit easier to follow. Everything else will remain where it is. So like the claws and things, I want them to be there. Why? Because for instance, if I want to like paint some things in this area right here, I know that these things will never like separate from each other. They will bend and move, but they won't separate. Uh, the jaw will move. So that's why I'm separating the jaw from everything else. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's the only piece that we need to do. Now, here comes a very important part, which is naming convention, because we're going to be using a trick inside of, uh, of Substance to make sure that we get the proper bakes. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to select each individual object and call it for what it is. So this is, for instance, let's call this minion body underscore LP. Okay, and then to save time, I'm just going to copy this. This is going to be minion jaw. Let's give it a different name. I, th I think he, he, he should have a different name. So he's like a crab and a gas crab. Um, uh, he's like a poison crab. I don't know. Let's do a random name generator real quick and see if, if we get something. Random creature name generator. There's usually a lot of these things. There we go. Okay. Okay. Ooh, a fogling. That looks great. That looks amazing. So it's going to be called fogling. So fogling. Well, you guys are not going to believe this, but um, when I was renaming, like I know that there was a sudden cut there. I don't know why the software paused, the recording paused, and I just kept talking and talking. I was almost done with the UVs. I'm literally almost done with the UVs. And, um, and unfortunately, well, it's not saved. I'm not going to let you guys uh, go without knowing all of the steps. So, uh, yeah, let's do it again. Let's just uh, restart the, the, the process. Uh, I'm just going to like skip one little thing, which is the renaming. As you can see, I've renamed every single piece of my character to their proper naming convention. Uh, I did a couple of things. For instance, the eyes here, I duplicated them to create the high poly eyes and I smoothed them two times so that I have the exact same eyes because they were a little bit different from the ones on the uh, software. Same for this ones. This ones were created here inside of Maya. So I just duplicated them and I didn't smooth this. These are exactly the same. You can see the H poly and the low poly. They're exactly the same just for some things that we're going to talk later on uh, inside of uh, Substance. So I have all of my high polys right here with proper naming convention. And then I have all of my low polys right here again with proper naming convention. I'm going to go to the group here on the, on the high poly and I'm going to hide it. And now we can grow, work on the low poly with the UVs. And as I was mentioning, we already had some of the UVs. Look at this. <laughs> There's the UVs for the claws and then the UVs for the jaw, but that's fine. Let's do it again. So um, I'm going to link here on the top one of the videos that I did earlier this year talking about like the important things that you need to take into account when doing UVs. And I'm going to show you, of course, the technique right here, but it should be like up there. 
Now, I'm going to grab everything here, and the first step is to delete the UVs. I'm going to go UV, and I'm going to delete the UVs. So no UVs whatsoever. And then I'm going to grab everything here, and I'm going to say UV, planar mapping, and I'm going to do a camera-based planar mapping. I'm just going to hit apply. What this does, it just takes a screenshot of the geometry, and it creates a UV with no cuts. This is very important. It creates like a clean slate UV like thing that we can use to uh, to start creating our own UV. So if I go UV, UV editor, you're going to see that everything has a UV map. It's been UV mapped. You can actually like texture this, but it's going to be horrible. And uh, what's going to happen here is that now we're going to go piece by piece or, or uh, part by part, and we're going to be doing the UVs. So let's start from the easiest one to the most complicated one. Let's start with the eyes. The eyes, as you can see, are spheres. And the way we cut spheres, uh, it's, there's a couple of ways. You can cut like an orange when you go on the like on the Y axis, or you can cut it across, which is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna select the object and I'm gonna say UV, 3D cut and UV tool, and I'm gonna double tap this guy right here and double tap this guy right here. What that does is it indicates a cut for the UV tool to work with. If you are used to the Blender way of doing um, UVs, it's very similar. You mark the edge and then when you unfold, the software knows that that's the edge you wanna unfold from and you create something more interesting. So here I'm gonna select the UV shells and I'm gonna press Control U. And with that done, as you can see, we've successfully split that sphere into two perfectly laid out UV maps. Okay, so that's the that's the that's the the tool or the things that we're gonna do. We're gonna delete the UVs, create some clean new UVs, and then we're gonna um, unfold those UVs. Let's go to this guys right here, for instance. And here's where retopology is really important. Uh, if you remember from yesterday's video, having clean loops and having things that have like some sort of symmetry makes it a lot easier because I can just go to 3D cut and so UV tool, do a double tap, and as you can see by double clicking right there, we can very easily cut across the whole thing front side and back side, very, very easily. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna go UV, UV editor, and we're gonna say control U to unfold them as well. And there we go, we have the back side and the front side, back side, well, back side and front side. And this are gonna work perfectly fine. The scale is not right just yet, but I wanna finish the unfold first and then we'll talk about the scale. Now, one thing I'd like to do just to know that we're advancing is just hide what they're done with. Let's go with the tail. The tail is very easy and this is very really important. When you have an object that's empty or that has a hollow thing, like in this case, as you can see, I, I removed the faces on the inside. When you have an object like this, it automatically gives you some cuts. So it's automatically cut on that area. You can see the white line right there. So the only thing we need to do is just add a cut on the lower portion of the, uh, like hide that cut so it's not as visible. And that's it, because this is pretty much like a cone, right? So imagine a cone without the, the cap on the bottom, we just cut through the side and we just unfold it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna press Control U, and there we go, we got this thing right there. So those ones are ready as well. You just press H to hide them, and perfect. Now we're gonna go to one of the tricky areas, which is this jawline right here. And the, for the jawline, um, we're not gonna be able to just like select one line and cut across the whole thing. We could, but it's gonna give us some like really weird distortions, and I don't think that's really what we want. Although on a second thought, that might be exactly what we want. <laughs> so, now I'm gonna show you the the, the, the like the pro uh, way to do it. It's gonna give us more more cuts, but it's gonna give us a cleaner uh, texture as well. So I'm gonna go to my 3D cut and you uh, so UV tool. I'm gonna go up here to symmetry and I'm gonna turn symmetry on object X. As you can see, that should work on your geometry. And if I double click on one side, it's gonna affect on the other side. Now what I'm gonna do here is I wanna extract each tooth, like you're seeing right here and kind of like isolated. You can see that's gonna be the island for this big tooth right there. And then for this smaller tooth, we just follow this loop, which again, I was very careful to, to create that loop when I was doing retopology. There's this loop right here. And that makes it easier to select the tooths or the teeth. We also have this one right here. And there we go. So now each individual tooth has been uh, like split into its own island. And now that it's split onto its own island, we can do the same thing that we just did for the arms, which is cut in half. So we get a better distribution. So I'm gonna go here. You can see that that's called a spiral and those are bad, 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 bad. So let's control C there real quick. And let's go to this guy right here. There we go. You can see that one goes a little bit better and then we can just complete the loop right there. So that was a mistake by my part. I, I somehow created a spiral when doing the retopology. It's not the end of the day, as you can see here, we can fix it by doing this cut. Uh, but you gotta be very careful about spiral. That's why I don't like using Siri Mesher as much because Siri Mesher tends to do a lot of spirals. That one's fairly easy, just a cut right there. This one's fairly easy as well, just a cut right there. 
and this one's fairly easy as well, just to cut right there. Now, the reason we're doing this cut like in half is so that the distortion and the unfold gives us a better result. We could, of course, just keep it as, as a cone or just add one line like we, we did with the tail, but it will give like, it would give us a slightly different result. And one of the things that I uh, like about this is that once we're in Substance Painter, we're gonna be able to to use some tricks to hide that seam lines. Back in the day, back when I was a student, we we did use uh, Photoshop for most of the of the uh, retopology and uh, and UVs, and it was painful, really, really, really painful. By using the the techniques that we have now with like Mari and 3D Code and stuff like that, it's a uh, it's a lot better. By the way, if you want to learn about Mari or 3D Code or any of the other uh, texturing softwares, we do have the options available inside of Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're gonna be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. My hair was way puffier back then <laughs> when I recorded that uh, little ad. So yeah, now here, for instance, on the front teeth, this one's right here. I'm gonna go through this line and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna try to cut the teeth like in half. You can see most of them have a, a nice topology that flows and follows and uh, that makes it a lot easier. So we're gonna have the top part of the jaw, the bottom part of the jaw, and now we just need to cut here on the back, like there, for instance. And that's it. We're gonna have the bottom part we're gonna have the top part and then each tooth or each teeth is gonna be separated as well. We go to the GB editor and we just press Control U and there we go, look at this, beautiful. We got the top part, bottom part, and then two halves of each uh, individual like little thing or each individual tooth. We're gonna uh, uh, act, like properly organize all of those points as soon as we're uh, as soon as we're done with the, with the UVs. We have that one and now we go to this one right here. We're gonna keep the object X turned on so that makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna go to UVs and we're gonna do 3D cut and sew again. Now, this is fairly simple. If you see a cylindrical shape, you're gonna follow the following like pattern. You're gonna go to the base of the cylinder, which I call a cap, that's a cap. And then you're gonna go to the top part of the cylinder, which is another cap. And then you're gonna cut across like that. Again, you always wanna do this in an area that's gonna be hidden. So in this part, it's like the, like the bottom area right here, or like the bottom back area, like this one right there. So when this unfolds, it's gonna be a flat surface right here and then all of this unfold. Do we need to unfold each segment? Not really. If you find that there's a lot of distortion, oh, like there we go, there we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So again, um, let me show you real quick the, it's horrible, the softwares. Well, they're not horrible, they're great, but <laughs> when you mess up, it's uh, they're really unforgiving, right? So uh, this is the result from the UV. Again, like the top part, top part, and each individual teeth. And then on this one, what I was uh, mentioning just a, a second ago is that when we're doing the arm right here, we are gonna be doing the base of the arm and then along the arm and then the cap of the arm. As you can see, that's gonna separate it from the bottom. I'm gonna repeat it, it's the exact same thing. I'm gonna do it right here. So remember the loop that we created when we were doing this arm right there? Actually, it's this one. There we go, so this is the loop. Okay, so that's the loop. And then we cut like a little cap on the top, like could be that one right there. And then one line that goes across. If you don't find one line, just try to look for one like that one. And there we go. Same deal here, double click, double click, double click. There we go. And then up here, we go all the way there. And you can kind of see how the cap draws itself like that. You don't always need to do the cap, um, but I, I found that it helps uh, for the for the deformation again. And uh, we can, of course, uh, again, paint the seams later on. So that's the cap right there. Now, since this is smaller leg, as you can see, we could even like do a horizontal cut like this one right here. And that could also work. I actually think, now that I see that one, that on this, uh, like small ones, we might benefit more from doing that thing. So I'm just gonna delete that one right there. And I'm gonna try to find this horizontal. Yeah, there we go. That one's way, way better. Way cleaner as well. There we go. So for this first one, we were gonna have cap, cap, and then along the whole thing. And then for this one, we're gonna have the bottom part and the top part, which again, is gonna hide the seams a little bit better. Now, for the body, um, we 
probably wonder, especially like here for the tail, we might want to do something similar. So I'm going to go to like this line right here, which goes across. And then we're going to cut like the bottom part like this, or maybe even like here. There we go. So we're going to have the top of the tail and the bottom of the tail. And on the body, we're also going to have something similar. So as you can see, I'm going to cut in the center of each of these little legs right here. And we're going to have like the top or the, the, the bottom part of the body. Let's go right there in the middle of the mouth. So you can see how this whole torso right here is going to be its own island, right? Hopefully it's uh, fairly clear to see why and how we're doing that. And now we need to think about the, the big like mushroom head up here. Uh, well, first of all, the cylinders up here, they're going to create some issues. So again, to alleviate those issues, we're going to do the exact same thing with that we just did. So we're just going to do the base of the cylinder, the cap of the cylinder, and then along the cylinder. So the base of the cylinder, and then the cap of the cylinder, and then along the cylinder, base of the cylinder, cap of the cylinder, and then along the cylinder. I like to call that cap, cap, and along the, the border. That usually helps. And here's where, again, we need to think about where to hide the seams, right? Like, where do we want to hide the seams so that we can make things look a little bit better? So we don't want this whole mass to be a single island. It will be a little bit too much. So I'm going to go to the border, this border right here, and I'm going to use that border, which is quite hidden in certain areas, to cut along the whole thing. So now the cap of the mushroom should unfold like a shield and it should have like a really nice flat area without really like uh, creating any sort of intrusions on this like a head area. Now, again, for the head area, why not just go here and cut the front part of the face from the rest of the elements like that, right? We just do this. We don't really need to unfold the teeth as much because these are a smaller teeth. But if you want to be like super, super pro about this, then yeah, we can just like loop around each teeth to help with the with the cut on the on the element. Some people also like to cut the inside of the eyes, like that little uh, that little shape right there. It's also going to help a little bit with the distortion. So you can see we're going to have the face as one island, each little teeth as a separate island, and then uh, all of this back part as a, as a big, big, big uh, piece. Now, here's where, again, we need to decide, do we want such a big island? Probably not. So let's just add one more cut line here. So we're going to have the side of the island and then the back of the island. It will depend on productions. Certain productions will tell you try to keep the islands as big as possible. Some productions will go with smaller islands. Again, it depends. In my experience, this for this character is going to work uh, perfectly fine. And now we take a look. We grab all of these things and we press Control U to activate Unfold. And there we go. Look at this. This is the cap. I told you it was going to be like a shield. Looks quite, quite nice. There's a little bit of an issue here. You can see how it's like creating a really, really big problem. And that's probably because we forgot to do some sort of cut. So let's go UV. 3D cut and let's see where we messed up. There we go. So you can see this little guys right here. We need to complete the loop right there. For some reason, the, the mirror didn't work right there. Let's go back to UV. Select all the shells and press Control U again. That's a lot cleaner, clean. And it's just a matter of like checking each island and making sure that they look as clean as possible, which in this case they do. That's the face right there. So yeah, everything seems to be working perfectly fine. Now, we're ready. We're pretty much done with the uh, with the UV process. All of the pieces that we have right here have proper UVs, but they're not properly laid out. Here's where the, where the next trick, where the next section of the process goes. So I'm going to go UV, UV Editor. I'm going to grab the whole UV shells, and I'm going to press Control U again, just to, just to give them one more layout or one more unfold. And then I'm going to press Control L. And Control L will pack everything, as you can see, in a single island. And not only will it pack it, it will try to keep the proportions. If I turn this little grid on, it will try to keep the proportions so that every single piece of the uh, character has the same proportions. You don't want certain parts of the character to have more density or more texture resolution than others. This is what we want. We want everything to be as nicely laid out as possible. I do have some options, though. I'm going to show them. Uh, I'm going to show you the options that I have for my layout, which is on Modify, Layout. And these are my options. First of all, shell prescale and preserve 3D ratios. This is very, very important. I do have translate shells turned on so that it can move the shells around. I can turn on rotate shells, for instance, like I can say, like try 90 degrees rotations. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Like just pack together, non-overlapping. If I do this now, control L, control L, you can see it gives me pretty much the same result. 
So yeah, that's uh, that's it. This is the UV. Now, one thing you can see is that some of these are really, really close to the border. So I'm going to make one small change just to avoid any potential issues. Down here is where it says shell padding. I'm going to say four pixels. It's going to be a 4K map, so it's going to be four or eight pixels. And then uh, same thing, eight pixels from the tile. So you always want your UVs to be inside this one-to-one -one square. Not always. A little uh, uh, asterisk, uh, asterisk there. There's always there, there's other advanced options where you can use multiple UVs and stuff like that, but we're not going to talk about that. For a basic stuff, for a basic setup, you want all of your UVs to be in the same like square and just hit uh, like a line. And as you can see, this is what we get. Some of them did rotate, which is fine. I mean, it's an organic thing, so there really shouldn't be that much of a problem. And see this, like the packing is, was done really, really nicely. We're not, uh, we're using as much space as possible. We're not really. Um, throwing away any empty space and pretty much everything looks really, really cool. So perfect. This is pretty much it. I'm not going to stop the video right here. Today's video is going to go a little bit longer than, than the last ones uh, because I do want to do like a basic uh, texturing like setup and then tomorrow we'll come back for a more advanced uh, like texturing phase. So the next step is to export these things. I'm going to grab a, the group and everything inside of the group. I'm going to say file, export selection. I'm going to go to my assets folder to our minion, always keep things organized. And this is gonna be called a fogling, fogling high poly. FBX, we're exporting as FBX. This is very important because uh, the process that we're gonna use instead of Substance Painter needs FBX so that it knows the names and the, and the hierarchy that we have right here. This first export is going to be a little bit slower because we're exporting, again, the almost 2 million triangles that we have right here. Uh, so it will take a little bit longer. I'm going to export this one. Uh, oh, sorry. And then let's wait and export the low poly one as well. I'm going to pause the video to save a little bit of time. And hopefully I don't forget to uh, unpause it. Very well. Seems like we are recording and everything. And uh, yeah, this is over. So now we grab the low poly and we do the exact same thing. Export selection. This one, we're not going to call it underscore low poly. We're just going to call it Fogling because there's only one low poly character, right? So there we go. That one exports a lot uh, faster because it doesn't have as many uh, triangles or faces, right? So we're going to go to the last part. As I mentioned, uh, today we're just going to be working on the basic of the, of the geometries. And then we're going to keep going. By the way, uh, I saw the messages, guys, and it seems like all of you guys want me to continue with this. So I was thinking about having next week be the Christmas week, but maybe we'll like shorten that down to like one or two Christmas days so that we can continue working on this guy. It's going to be my, my little Christmas gift to you all. So we're going to go here, new, and we're going to select the Fogling HP or low poly, sorry. Tyros, this is a character I did for the last course. We're working on part two right now. So exit live. Assets, we go to the minion, and this is the Fogling, the basic one, the F, uh, the the low poly one. Uh, OpenGL is fine, no option selected here, like just as is, and we just hit OK. And when we import it, this is what we should have. First thing you should do, go F2 or F1, and make sure that you have your UVs working properly. Also, make sure that you only have one material. I didn't change the material on this guy, so that's why it's Lambert 1 here on the texture set list. But if you, by accident, assign different materials to your character inside of Maya, you're probably going to have different set lists. It would, that, would be the, that would mean that those are different like materials on your character. And we really don't want that. We're going to keep it everything in a single material. So make sure before you export the low poly one, you only have one material right there. Now we're going to go to texture set settings. And this is the bake process. The bake process will, um, as the name implies, bake all of the details from our character into this low poly character right here. So I'm going to change the size to 4K so that we have the best possible quality. And we're going to go here to high definition meshes. And this is where we're going to load our Fogling HP. And here's the most important part. We're going to go down here and where it says a match, we're going to say by mesh name because we don't want the normal map information to be baked from one piece to another. We only want the pieces that are their own pieces to be baked into their own like low polys. You know what I mean? What what, what this would what what this mainly means is that for instance the eye is a circle. If we bake the normal map without changing this option right here, the eye will be baked into the body as well. So if at any point the eye pops out or something, you will see the normal map of the eye right there, which is not going to happen. But just to keep things like cleaner, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, you could also do the same thing here on the ambient occlusion where it says self occlusion and on the thickness, but we're only going to do it on the normal map for now because that's the pretty much the only place I want to make sure that uh, remains uh, clean. 
Um, I do want to have like ambient occlusion everywhere else for the for the texturing process. Uh, another thing that we're going to do here is we're going to change the anti-aliasing to two by two. This is going to soften up the, the, the normal map a base and it should give us a slightly better result. And that's it. We just hit bake. And in real time, you're going to be able to see here how all of that information is going to be baked down into the character. Um, we have an issue. We're not seeing any normal information. That's a problem. We need to see why. <laughs> so it seems, it seems like something failed here. Not No mesh could be loaded. That's really weird. I, I did set this thing. Yeah, okay. That's really weird. Let's let's figure out what this is. So I'm going to save this real quick before anything uh, bad happens. I'm going to open a new scene. Uh, I'm not going to save, which already saved. And I'm going to import the uh, Fogling uh, HP FBX. Because if when I import this, we don't get anything, that means that something is uh, like not working properly. I was about to say that baking is usually fairly easy and fairly simple. No, there it is. Okay. So our fogling is right here. It is working, or it is on the scene. For some reason here on the bakes. It's really weird. Let's try again. Nope. Okay, it's not finding it. That's fine. Let's re-export. So I'm going to select everything here again. I'm going to change the names here. I'm not sure if this is the problem. It shouldn't be. I'm just going to change this to HP like this. I'm also going to assign the, the same material to all of the pieces. The Lambert one. And let's export this again. Sometimes I've had some issues with the FBX exported in like a different format. You can see this is FBX 2018. I'm going to try to export this in the, like the newest one, like 2020. Let's see if that one works. Let's replace that. So it will take a little while to export. Uh, it did take quite a bit of uh, time, like last time. Oh, it's a little bit faster now. Oh, actually, okay, that tells me that there probably was something. So uh, same asset, just hit bake, and let's see if this works. That's really weird. Okay, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cancel this, guys. Or actually, let's let's try it again. Nope. Okay. So I'm going to pause this real quick, guys, to figure out what the issue is, because we're doing everything the way we're supposed to be doing it. And uh, I'll show you in just a second. So I figured it out. Um, very, very basic mistake on my part. I'll show you real quick. It had nothing to do with the export. The export was fine. It had to do with the settings. As you can see, this is the bakes. Uh, I'll do the bakes again in just a second. Uh, the problem was here. <laughs> Down here, remember how we changed this by mesh names? Well, by default, I forgot that instead of substance, it's uh, it actually says low and high. And if you remember when we were doing our um, like configuration, we said LP and HP. So just change that. As you can see, low poly mesh is going to be underscore LP and low uh, high poly mesh is going to be underscore HP. Because what was happening here is it was trying to bake, but then when it went through the names, it didn't find the underscore high because there was no underscore high. There was underscore HP. So now by changing this, as you can see, the bakes work uh, as intended. So again, when we just hit bake, as you can see, this is the transfer of information. All of the high poly details are being baked down into the low poly character. And we're going to be able to um, to start working with the with the main things, right, with the, with the character. So this is it. As you can see, now the next thing is just to check and make sure that the bakes are working nice, that we don't have any like uh, empty spots or anything. And things seem to be working perfectly fine. As you can see, the, 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 the seam lines are pretty much non-visible. Um, and uh, yeah, everything looks uh, quite, quite nice. So as I mentioned, we're just going to do a very quick <clears throat> like texturing um, texturing thing to to get this character into a, an interesting position. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go here to the materials, to my materials. I'm just going to look for a plastic, basic pla like plastic mat. I'm going to drop it right here. And this is going to be like my base, like skin color. If you uh, let's open the, the concept real quick. There we go. So if you take a look at this character, you're going to see that most of the color is this like yellow color. And then we have the purple color. I'm just going to drag this to the side. And what we can do here is we can go to the plastic and we can just select with my eyedropper, like the base, like color. There we go. And then we can drop another one, another plastic uh, color right here. 
And this one, we're also going to sample now the, the purple color, which would be something like this. And the way Substance Painter works, by the way, if you're uh, unfamiliar with Substance Painter, is it allows us to work with layers and masks to like tell where we want certain materials to be. And not only that, we can also change the properties of the material. So for instance, this plastic that we have right now, it's quite rough. So if we bring this down, you can see it becomes shinier. It, it, it reflects more light and we get a, a wetter sort of effect. So uh, we're going to be talking about more about textures tomorrow on the, on the next video. But right now, I just want to do a quick blocking. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click and I'm going to add the black mask. And what this black mask will allow me to do is I can paint where I want this purple color to be. So for this one, I'm going to turn on symmetry up here so we don't have to do this twice. And as you can see, it's just a matter of like literally painting where the purple color is going to be. And this paint will also allow me to have like a soft transition into the into the skin. I know we could use the UV to like just like flood all of these things, but since this is a more of an organic character, I want to keep things a little bit more organic, more natural looking. So I'm just using this paint brush to do this. We do have courses. I, I've done uh, some character courses and, and creature cr concepts with uh, where we uh, talk about Substance Painter. And recently, uh, one of our instructors released a very advanced series about Substance Painter as well. So if you want to check that one out, uh, the links are going to be down here on the description as always. So there we go. Perfect. So we just paint the basic stuff right here. Now for this, guys, for the for the clause, I'm just going to press number four, which is my uh, like fill option, fill polygon fill. I'm going to fill the mesh and I'm just going to fill them like that. That way I don't have to like manually paint them. and It's going to be a little bit easier to find stuff. And uh, th that's it. Like this is pretty much the way we, we normally work with this sort of stuff. I'm just going to show you one last like thing. I am going to use another plastic mat and I'm going to sample like the reddish color that it has on the crevices, like this brown color. I'm going to add a black mask. I'm going to right click on that black mask and I'm going to add a generator, which is going to be a dirt generator, which is going to go on the dirt of the character. And then we can play around with the intensity of that dirt, as you can see right there. And what this will do, if I change this to something like an overlay, it's, it will it will merge with the crevices of the of the character and we'll be able to, to start creating the, the paint. This is what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to be working on all of these things and all of these elements to uh, to blend in and create the textures that we want. I want to go for this sort of like, again, stylized, like not, not hand painted, but just like a, a little bit more whimsical sort of colors. It's not going to be like super realistic, but look at that. Look at how nice all of these textures look. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now you probably saw the thumbnail and the thumbnail, what I'm uh, using is I'm using this thing up here called the eye ray, which is the, the way we're going to be uh, like seeing our stuff. This is a, a render that we have here inside of a substance. What I can do here is I can just, just change this to a clear color or like a, like a lighter color. There we go. And probably something like this is going to be our, our thumbnail. There we go. So that's it, guys. This is part four of our course. We're now starting the texturing process. We did all of the UBs. We got our bakes working perfectly nice. And uh, we're ready to jump onto the next uh, part. Oh, my audio or my video there is, uh, let's pause this. There we go. So yeah, this is it, guys. If you've liked the series so far, please, please help us with some likes, with some shares so that more people learn about this and they can learn about this whole uh, 3D process. Tomorrow, we're going to be working on the textures. It's going to be a very, very fun process as well. And uh, hopefully, we'll be um, rigging and animating this guy very, very soon. So that's it. Leave us a like, share, comment. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you back.